Folks, I hope you guys are doing well. I'm sharing uh, the book of Exodus today, chapters one through eight. I'll be sharing Exodus today and what I learned so far. And so to start, the Egyptians in the Bible were, um, they thought of themselves to be better than the Hebrews. So they enslaved the Hebrew people. And so Pharaoh, he was the king of Egypt. He had many different rules and stuff that he had set for uh that he had set for the uh, Hebrew people. And so one of them was that if a woman bear a child, a, a male child, to, to get rid of them, to kill them, basically. And if it was a, a girl, she could be able to live on. And uh, he also stated to the midwife, so he said these things to the midwife, but the problem was his plan didn't go accordingly because the midwife feared the Lord. So they didn't do what uh, Pharaoh told them to do. They didn't want to do that because they knew it was against God's will. And so he was angry about that. And he wanted the, the uh, male children to be thrown into the river. And so I'm getting into Moses now. That's where Moses comes about. So I'm learning about Moses. And um, so Moses was born. He was, con you know, a woman conceived. And she tried to hide him for about three months. And she couldn't do that. Because she wanted to hang on to him. There was something good about Moses. He called him a goodly child. And so she ended up giving up. Um, she ran out of options. And ended up casting Moses out into the river. And so one day Pharaoh's daughter came. And she wanted to wash herself in the river. And she saw the baby you know, floating down the river. And she went to uh, acknowledge, who, acknowledge the child. And so she saw that he was a Hebrew baby. And in these times, like she, it was hands off. They treated Hebrew people, the Egyptians treated Hebrew people less than human. And so she couldn't even care, didn't even want to care for the child. So she called for a Hebrew woman to actually care for the child, a physician, um, to get the baby back in good health. And, and as Moses began to grow up, he noticed um, that his brother was being killed by an Egyptian. And so he went and retaliated and killed an Egyptian himself. And when Pharaoh found this out, the Pharaoh found this out, he went and tried to kill Moses, but didn't succeed the in that saw all of the bondage and oppression that the Hebrew people were going through, the people of Israel were going through. And he, Lord, remember his covenant he made with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And he had respect for the uh, people of Israel. He wanted them out of bondage. And then next was uh, chapter three, I believe, was the burning bush. And so where Moses had an encounter with an angel from the Lord that was sent from the Lord about the burning bush. And so in which a, a tree, a bush was on fire and Moses was trying to figure out how was this um, fire, you know, how was the tree burning, but it wasn't consumed to where it was spreading or like actually burnt. And so the Lord uh, revealed to Moses exactly what was going on. He told Moses to take your shoes off. You are standing on holy ground. Then the Lord began to tell Moses that he sees everything that's going on with how the Egyptians are treating the Hebrew people. And he wants to deliver them out of their state of oppression. And so the Lord wants to bless the people of Israel with a land that, that overflows with milk and honey. Then the Lord tells Moses that he wants to send him there. The Lord wants to send Moses to uh, the king of Egypt, which is Pharaoh, to tell to let the people be free, to let my people go, says the Lord. That's what the Lord says. That's what he tells Moses to say. But Moses was a little indecisive and not too confident. And then, uh, but Moses asked the Lord some questions. He said, what should I say when I go there, when he gets to Egypt? And the Lord told him, I am that I am. Basically, I am that I am sent you. The Lord is the I am, the great I am. And so, yeah, Moses was discouraged in the moment about So the Lord tells Moses to go ahead and gather all of the elders of Israel and tell them the plan to get them up out of there, what the Lord had planned for them to send, to take them out of Egypt and send them over to the land of the Canaanites. And the Lord knew that Moses would not leave Egypt without a fight. So the Lord told, promised him that he would have his hand stretched out and ready for action. You know, because he knew that it, it wouldn't be an easy 
transaction just to go into that land. This was a hardened land of bondage, a pure bondage. And the Lord knew he wouldn't, Moses wouldn't leave without a fight, but the Lord promised to have his back. And then, uh, but Moses, I'm going to read from chapter four, Moses is rot. And um, so Moses was still in disbelief. He was questioning the Lord, um, you know, on whether the people, the Egyptians would believe him. You know, he did, he doubted that they would believe him. And so uh, the Lord uh, asked Moses to hand him his rod, I mean, to show him his rod. And so Moses had a rod and the Lord told him to, so Moses had a rod and the Lord wants to show uh, Moses exactly what he meant, how he can make things happen the way he wants to. So Moses had a rod in his hand. The Lord said, what is that? Moses said a rod. And so the Lord told Moses to drop it on the ground, to cast it on the ground. And Moses did that. And then the rod turned into a serpent. And Moses was just like, well, what is this? And then um, he told him to grab the serpent by the tail. And as Moses grabbed the serpent by the tail, it actually turned back into the rod. So the Lord was showing him wonders and signs that he is the Lord and that he could do what he wants to do. He can make things happen. You know, Moses was still in disbelief on um, people believing that the Lord has sent them into the land of Egypt. And so... The Lord had another example for him. This time he told him to take his hand and to place it in his bosom. And uh, Moses did that and his hand turned white. And then once he re the Lord told him to remove his hand, it returned back to the flesh of, of his uh, natural color. And so the Lord gave Moses signs that you could believe. That's what the Lord was telling Moses. You could believe. It doesn't matter if they believe or not. I'm showing you what I can do. So the Lord showed Moses exactly what he could do. And so Moses couldn't doubt that. You know, Moses could not doubt the work of the Lord. And that's what the Lord was showing Moses. Don't doubt me. Don't doubt what, what I'm telling you to do, basically. The Lord went on to tell Moses, hey, if they don't believe these two signs that I just showed you, you're going to take that water out their rivers, put it onto dry land. It's going to turn into blood. So the river basically would turn into blood. They didn't listen uh, to the voice of Moses and, and how he was sent from the Lord to tell um, Pharaoh to let my people go. And another thing that um, stood out was Moses was concerned about his speech. So as I was reading, I noticed that he may have had some type of speech impairment to where he wasn't confident. So it said slow tongue, so speech impairment. And the Lord said, I created everybody. That's what he told him. I created you. I know the situation. And it didn't matter to the Lord. And that's what he told him. So boosting his confidence from zero to a hundred. Um, and that's what the Lord does for us. He boosts our confidence from zero to a hundred. I made you. You're unique and you're special in your own way. Uh, the Lord told Moses, I will teach you what to say. Listen to me. I will teach you what to say. Um, so, but the, the Lord became angry with Moses because he, you know, he just, Moses just wasn't listening. And um, so the Lord asked about Aaron, which is Moses' brother, and he wanted to use Aaron. He didn't take Moses out the equation, but he used Aaron to be a voice. You know, he wanted his people to be set free. So that was the goal of the Lord, was to get the people out of bondage because he saw that they were no oppression, oppressed. And to get them out in the land of the Canaanites, new start with a land that flows with milk and honey. So Moses didn't want to uh, resume that responsibility. So this task was given over to Aaron, but Moses was still there at his shoulder, his brother's shoulder. The Lord told Aaron, this is your assignment right here. Go and tell Aaron exactly what I told you and show him the signs that I showed you too. And also, uh, Moses was assigned to go back to get his family and, and take everybody with him, his whole family with him, his wife and children, over to uh, Egypt so that they could be established there. And then the Lord got Aaron and told Aaron to meet his brother Moses in the wilderness. So Moses went on and told his brother Aaron everything that the Lord uh, told him and all the signs and the wonders that the Lord showed him as well with the rod. And so um, Moses did take the rod with him as well. 
they end up meeting in the wilderness together and they end up meeting up with the elders um, of Israel and the people believed. Uh, the people believed that the Lord did visit um, Israel, the people of Israel, and did notice their affliction, their oppression. After five, um, Pharaoh was confronted by Moses and Aaron and Pharaoh didn't believe. And, they, and Pharaoh said, why should, I, why should I obey this voice? So Pharaoh's heart was very hardened and he didn't want to listen and he wanted to get the uh, the Hebrews back to work with some straw to keep on building and building. And Aaron and Moses was like, nah, let my people go. It's time for them to go. And so Pharaoh didn't listen. He didn't take heed to the warnings of the Lord that um, Moses and Aaron were sent strictly from the Lord to, to warn him to let the people go or else. Moses witnessed all of the... Um, the bondage that the people were in, he asked the Lord, you know, why did you send me here? You know, I didn't want to see this basically, you know, they've been treated so badly and he witnessed that. And uh, Moses, he, he wasn't feeling that, you know, he asked the Lord questions. He asked him, you know, why did you send me here? You know, these people are treated terribly. A response to Moses and says, I am the Lord. You know, I have plans. I'm in charge here. You know, he still was willing and promising to get the people out of uh, Egypt and to send them out to the Canaanites to start a new life. We disbelieve when God give us an assignment, no matter what that assignment may be. We may disbelieve. We may be in fear. We may have many questions like, Lord, why me? Why do you want me to share this testimony? I don't think people will believe me. But the Lord still believes. And that's what's most important. So basically, it's not about pleasing man to get men's approval, but to be obedient to what God is telling you to do. You know, I had um, experienced that, you know, not too long ago with people coming on my comments and, oh, you know, I don't know if that's true or not. I don't, it's not up to you to decide that. God told me to share my testimony and it's, I'm, this is pertaining to the hell testimony, the most urgent and most all of them are serious but the most urgent uh and serious testimonies i have yet to date and that's why my comments are closed on there because you know i have people it's a distraction when people come on there and try to debate about that never mind me saying hell is real god says it's real i've been there and god told me to share my testimony the more i made a testimony on hell um, shortly after this happened about two years ago, I believe about two years ago. And so the more I read the word of God, the more, uh, hell came about and I was able to really articulate what happened and to put in the word biblical words of what happened, not just what I'm saying, but it's all biblical. So it doesn't matter what, um, we think it's, you know, we shouldn't say something because people would be you know, in disbelief. This has been happening. Is It's in the Bible right now, disbelief, not trusting in the Lord, but I trust the Lord. So I have no issue or no problem. And so it's all about being obedient to what the Lord says. Where we disbelieve, God doesn't disbelieve anything. He's in control of all things. You know, and it's even folks that want to debate with God's word. I'm out of that. I'm not debating with his word. I know his word stands sure. I know his word is true. So I'm out of that. You know, I could go with no comments and I'll be just fine with that because I don't need to try to seek nobody's approval. And um, for the grace of God, I'm still here to be able to share my testimony in the first place. So it's not my responsibility. And you should believe that too. It's not your responsibility on whether or not people believe you. Being obedient to God is more important, far more important than seeking approval from men. Okay, so going on to uh, chapter seven of Exodus, um, God's instruction to Moses. So Pharaoh, at this point, Pharaoh's heart is just hardened. He's not listening. He's not even cooperating whatsoever. And so just like the Lord promised before, if they don't hearken to his voice, because he's been sent by God, if they don't hearken to his voice, that he would turn the rivers into blood. And so this is what happened in this chapter. Um, the Egyptians, they were all hardened, you know, laughing and everything. And so um, Pharaoh didn't listen. So 
the rivers of uh, fresh water was gone. You know, the fish died out of the streams and everything. And um, musicians, you know, enchantments were performing enchantments and stuff too. That didn't help. Um, they actually contributed to uh, the um, consequences in Egypt by their enchantments and, and trying to do some divination out there, trying to figure out what's going on. It didn't work. It didn't work because the Lord's hand was all over that place. His finger was all over the place and he knew, they knew it, it was. They knew the Lord's hand was all over that place. And there was nothing that, that even the musicians can do about it. Hey, this, this is the final chapter I'm going to talk about right now. As of now, it's the plague of the frogs. <laughs> so the Lord wasn't playing. He sent frogs all throughout the border of Egypt. And so there was frogs in people's houses. There was frogs on the highways everywhere. And so Pharaoh was like, uh, he pulled Moses and Aaron aside and was like, you know, could we get rid of these frogs? He knew, he knew the frogs came from the Lord. He knew that this plague was a consequence, but he still um, didn't want to let the people go. And that, that was all he asked to do, let the people go. But he was already hardened. And so the Lord let him be that way, let Pharaoh be that way, that he continued in a reprobate mindset that, oh, I can do what I want. I'm not worried about that. And um, so that this consequence, you know, plague after plague, you know, the river dried up with blood and uh, the food resources were slimming down to nothing, you know. Um, but Pharaoh didn't care. He just cared about his position and, hey, I'm king of Egypt. But he wasn't thinking about uh, the Lord, though. He, he didn't think about where the Lord stands on high, the most high. You know, Pharaoh kept lying and lying. He, um, you know, after begging Moses and Aaron to, to ask the Lord to take the frogs away, uh, Pharaoh promised to let the people go, but he did not. And so another plague happened. Um, the Lord sent lice this time. Yes, you heard right. He sent lice into the land of Egypt. So the people were consumed with lice all over the place. Oof. Couldn't imagine that. Um, and so once again, it was just like a lie after lie. The Pharaoh said, oh, you know, please take this away. He couldn't stand it. Please take this away. And, um, you know, I promised to do to let the people go. You know, after uh, the Pharaoh didn't listen, once again, the Lord sent flies to consume the land of Egypt. And once again, Pharaoh had the same story over and over and, uh, you know, going to Moses and Aaron, please uh, take this plague away. And so, you know, Aaron, uh, not Aaron, but Moses went back to the Lord to let him know what Pharaoh said. You know, I promise to let them go. Let the people go if you remove the plagues. But Pharaoh just kept on lying and lying. The plagues just grew more and more. Um, so, yeah, that was uh, the, chapter eight, chapters one through eight, a uh, summary of what I read in Exodus so far. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I hope you guys have a blessed day.